Join us, friends. Great Scott, my guy. Do they know what we have in store for them? They will if they tighten up. And don't double dribble. To the Grey Ghost, my guy? Exactly, old chum. No time to waste. To the Grey Ghost. We have not a minute to spare. It's showtime, friends. All right, all right, all right. It is the spy guy, and it is... Glow trotting with Trey. And we are not wishing Cotton was a monkey. We call it Witwam. So, Trey, what is this episode going to be about? All right, Billy, I've been thinking about this. Today's episode, I want to talk about your Spa Guy repo days back on YouTube. Those were some of my favorite episodes that you've done. I think you did about 10 episodes. And, Billy, take that away because, man, I, this is going to be some fun things to talk about today. Okay, so we called it Hot Tub Repo. It was only six episodes total. Okay. And, of course, we didn't sell hot tubs with the idea of wanting to go repo them. We sold hot tubs with the idea of pe people keeping them. But the reality is that some people wouldn't pay for them. Some people even tried to steal the hot tubs. And we'll talk about some of those stories and how we figured out who was what and when and where and that kind of stuff. And basically the way it goes is the reason I'm called the spa guys own a hot tub company called the spa guy. And I started making YouTube videos about hot tub, how to where we would, uh, I would teach homeowners how to repair their hot tubs or even, even other people that work on hot tubs would watch the videos and learn. The other thing I would do was we would buy used hot tubs. I would refer them and I would use YouTube as a way to create commercial content. When I was putting videos on my website, uh, on the spa guy website for sale, I had to have a place to host them. So what I would do is go to YouTube and host the video on YouTube and then take that link and put it on the website and then show it for sale, take pictures of the hot tub. But we would also have a video, usually about one minute. A lot of those videos are still out there starting all the way back in 2009. Um, but YouTube was a way of hosting the videos. And then that moved into um, me making more intricate videos about hot tubs, me doing videos about hot tub moves, where we would take things up, like you can find videos of me taking a an eight by eight dimension one that weighs a thousand pounds down 16 steps or up 16 steps by myself, or taking a dynasty tub that weighs 900 pounds out of a deck by myself or putting it in a deck. And he did uh, do that, uh -oh. guys. He did do that on these episodes <laughs> when you go and search them after you watch or listen to this podcast. Spa Guy is literally, if you're watching this on YouTube, you, you'll see me doing it. He's like this with a hot tub over his shoulder. And I'm thinking, I'm screaming at the, at the, uh, the, the show, Billy. You're going to kill yourself, Billy. You're going to hurt you. You're going to break your legs. But Billy, man, and somehow you took care of business. <laughs> you did I it. did. And eventually I, I injured my body enough that I had to stop doing it. And the way that happened is kind of an interesting story. I had, I've had, i had three back surgeries. My very first back surgery um, was during a time when uh, I was doing hot tub repair regularly. And I can remember uh, suffering through it. Literally, I would lay in my bed in the morning. If, if I could ever get in bed, I could get in a position to get out of pain. But what I would have to do is in the morning, I would have to crawl out of my bed crawl into the shower and we have a seat in the shower. I'd sit on that seat and start the hot water on me, take a shower. I would crawl and lay in the floor and put my clothes on. If I could ever get to my van and get sitting up, I'd literally crawl down the stairs at my house and crawl outside, get in my van and then go to work. If I could ever get sitting up in the van, I could usually work that day. But I can remember one day in particular, uh, I was in, um, in what we would call, I would call it Nashville proper, um, not in downtown Nashville, but over by Nashville Shores by uh, Percy Priest Lake, by where the dam is. I was working at a house over there, putting a pump in. And I can remember getting out of my van and going to the house, taking the pump around there and getting the pump put in and then getting back in my van. And I sat there and I was in so much pain that I remember sitting there and I called Lori and I said, look, I, I can't take this anymore. I, I said, I'm in so much pain. I finished this job. I can't even go to the door and collect. I'm going to have to, I don't know what I'm going to, I don't know how I'm even going to collect for this job. I just, I, I'm in so much pain. I can't move. She called the doctor. It seemed like that was on a, maybe a Wednesday, the next Thursday or the next Friday of the next week I had back surgery. And it was a very, very scary, uh, 
situation, not on that particular back surgery, but we'll talk about one fast forward. So um, actually, I'm telling you wrong. I think it was that back surgery. Man, they're getting there. I know it was the very first back surgery. This actually happened. So it was a what they would call a partial disectomy. And the idea was uh, I had a herniated disc where some of the when you have a disc, they're flat together like this and there's a material between them. So what will happen is it'll push one side out and there's a nerve and it'll hit that nerve. And that's where the pain comes from. So they were going to go in, cut my back open, go in, and they were going to take that part that herniated that was pushing out and cut it off and get it off my nerve. And he told me that it would be instant um, pain relief. Mm -hmm. Basically, you're going to come in here. We're going to do a back surgery. You're going to get up and walk out of here, and it's going to be instant pain relief. You're going to feel great. So, um, I, and I think I'm pretty sure that I'm getting this correct. So what happened was, you know how when you have surgery, have you ever had surgery, Trey? I've had uh, for my arm. Okay. So they knock you out. And then when you wake up, they'll, it's kind of a thing where they'll say, okay, if you could go to the bathroom, you can go home. Mm -hmm. So Lori told me, and of course I'm out of it. I don't do good with being knocked out. Yeah. Um, and Lori told me that I was kind of walking on my tiptoes, like trying to go. And the nurse was trying to help me to the bathroom and I couldn't, I couldn't wrap my mind around what was going on, but finally she said, okay, well, let me get you back in the bed. And I laid in the bed and I'm coming, you know, as you're coming out of that fog from being uh, knocked out, you start becoming more cognizant of what's going on. So I remember telling the nurse, I feel my legs with my hands, but I don't feel them with my brain. And she said, what? I said, I can touch them with my hands. I know they're there, but my brain is not feeling my legs. And she said, I'll be right back. They rushed me into an MRI, and I remember being in that MRI. It took about 45 minutes, you know, and they stick you in that machine, and it's making all those uh, sounds. It sounds like a dubstep song. It's going, bloop, 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 bloop. you know, it's doing all these sounds. And by that time, I'm really starting to come out of this fog, you know, and I'm wondering if I'm ever going to walk again. Um, mm -hmm. And so 45 minutes, I'm out of that. They take me into the room. I'm only in the room a couple of minutes. My doctor... Uh, which is actually a, a friend of mine and a hot tub customer, by the way, came in and said, hey, we've got a, a, a hematoma in your back mm. and we're going to have to take you back to surgery. So they rushed me back into surgery um, and did a second surgery and closed the hematoma. And basically, from what I understand, and I'm not a doctor, although I play one on podcasts, um, a hematoma is where I was bleeding in my back, where there was a bleeding inside and it was pooling. And so it was pressing against my spinal cord and making it where I couldn't feel my legs. And he told me if I'd have left that day, I would have never walked again. And, um, and you know, it's in my mind to get up and go. You know, I'm ready to go. Um, but he told me he'd done more than a thousand of those surgeries. And that's the first time that that ever happened. Um, and I ended up having surgery again, same doctor, years and years and years later. Um, and what happened with that is, and that's kind of an aside to this hot tub repo thing, but I want people to understand why I don't do this stuff anymore. Yeah. And look, guys, I loved moving hot tubs. I did. That was one of my favorite things was to figure out how to take this box that weighs 800 pounds or 900 or 1,000 pounds and move it, especially by myself. And when I started taking my camera with me to film these things, to put it on YouTube, which I didn't do always, this was something that as it started taking shape, um, you know, I'd already been in the hot tub business for six or seven years before I started making the videos about selling the hot tubs on YouTube. And um, so I started filming it and trying to get creative with the way I filmed it and showing all the aspects of it and having drones and cameras mm -hmm. on the hot tub as it's moving. And I did all kinds of stuff like that. And so it got me to buy better cameras, which ended up causing me to go do Elvis videos because my the ability to make a better video was there. Better cameras, uh, better lighting, better sound, that kind of stuff. So anyway, um, many, 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 many years later, I'm going to say this happened 2015-ish. Um, I was at church. I played bass in the church band, and I was at church one Sunday morning, and I reached in the back of my Jeep to get my bass, and something in my lower back popped. All I did was just reached in and got my bass, and took it out. And I remember going into church and I played that morning. I went home and I was in pain 
But what I should have done now, hindsight being 2020, what I should have done is I should have rested my back. I should have taken some uh, muscle relaxers, that kind of stuff, and allowed my back to heal. But I didn't. I had already set up for Monday two 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 moves, hot tub moves. I set two up for Tuesday, two Thursday, two or two Wednesday, two Thursday. And that had already been set up before this injury happened. And me being an idiot, I went and did those eight moves. By Thursday, I could barely walk. And I got all eight of them done. But the by, And I have the video of the – I remember the very last one that I did on that Thursday was an L.A. spa that was down in a deck. And when I got it out, uh, I was in so much pain that I could literally barely walk. Hmm. And what I ended up doing was injuring myself further. And if you notice – and I'm better about it now, but if you notice uh, a lot of my earlier Elvis filming stuff in 2016, 2015, 2016, 2017, I really walk with a, a limp. And I still walk with a limp now if I'm tired. But that's because from this back injury, I ended up damaging a, a, a nerve in my back that controls one of the muscles in my right leg. So on my calf on my right side, one of my muscles is atrophied. It's not hooked to my brain anymore. So my right calf is a lot smaller than my left calf because of that atrophy. And the muscle that it controls is the one that allows you, you know how you could stand on your feet and, and tilt up by your tiptoes? Yeah. I can't do that with my right foot anymore. I don't, that muscle that does that, does that is not there. So it affected me doing karate. It affects me walking. It affects me in a lot of ways because that muscle is not there. So I don't have the strength in my right leg that I had in my left leg and it also the right leg is the one that injured in injured in the motorcycle accident when i was running from the cops when i was that's, 18. that's right so that leg's really taking a beating <laughs> yeah so that leg is really taking a beating and uh so that's why i limp so i tried to overcome the limp by um by focusing for one thing on it because when i'm walking and especially trying to film I'm trying to hold the camera steady. I'm trying not to limp, but I also have a camera that has the the uh, stabilization. Uh, stabilization in it, which is the lens actually moving to offset my movements. So there's a lot of things that I have done to try to make when I'm filming and moving yeah. smooth, but it's still not perfection. But what happened in this last surgery is, by the way, that happened on Sunday. I called the doctor on uh, Thursday afternoon and we had surgery the next Thursday again. And um, I was very fortunate. He's a friend of mine. So when I had stuff, I didn't have, even call the office. I just call him directly and he would help me. But I remember after this last surgery, he said, uh, he said, Billy, man, you got to, you got to find something else to do. Another, another hobby. Because if you continue doing this and injuring your back, the way that you're, you know, what you're doing to your back, and I'll be honest, I did a lot of stupid stuff moving tubs for the camera. Um, and what I mean is when I started filming, I would do jobs by myself because I was filming it that I could have had people help me do. And I even remember one time I told somebody this story recently. There was a time when I was at a hot tub that was up on a deck. It was over the deck was over my head. So it was about six and a half feet high. And it was a small tub. It was a 78 inch tub, but I was going to, because I was filming it, I was going to, I took the rail down and I was going to flip the tub off myself. And we have this bag that we call the wedge. It's like a giant wedge of cheese. It stands about four foot tall and you blow it up with, with vacuum cleaner air. You know how you can reverse the air on a vacuum cleaner and it'll push air out. This thing will lift a thousand pounds with one pound of air off okay. of a vacuum cleaner. So it's very, very strong. So what I was going to do is blow the bag up and pull the tub down and put it on the bag and let it down like that without any safety chains or any safety um, straps and that kind of stuff. And I remember standing there and going, you know, if I pull this thing off and I miss, it's going to jump off and hit this thing and it's going to fall on me. So I teetered that thing there several times and I finally went, you know what, you can't do this without safety. So I went and put a strap around it and used the strap. The video's on YouTube. But I was going to do it without the strap, trying to to do something spectacular for the camera. And so I started doing things that were dangerous um, and which was not very smart, including these hot tub repos turned out to be somewhat dangerous. Hey, um, they're entertaining, though, Spy Guy, because like I said, when I started watching you doing the Elvis history videos, 
I've discovered your repo videos and I watched all of them and I was hoping there were more of those. But like you just said, there were six episodes. But uh, I, I have like a memory of you and you can take take it away because it's like you you pull up to a gate and I believe it's closed and you fly the drone over the house. And uh, yeah. then you pulled up into the driveway. So the gate was not closed. You flew the drone, I guess, to see if anyone was was there at the home. Then you drove on up and uh, you found your hot tub. And yeah. within, I think, what, 10 minutes, 15 minutes? It was a little longer than 10 minutes, but not much longer. And that's actually repo number six. So I did six total. That was the last one. Okay. And that particular one, the gate was closed. And it was at a place where the house was way off the road. You, There was a gate. There was a road that went through the woods. And the house was in a clearing on the other side of the woods. And so I had been... Um, trying to figure out how I was going to get this hot tub. And I wanted to do it. I like to do, I didn't want, I don't want to pull up someone's house and be confronted. And the way the hot tub repos go, the, the way we sold these hot tubs was, this was a rent to own deal. So basically I own the, they signed a contract and I own the hot tub until the last payment's made. So the idea was, is a person, so let's get into that. And then, we'll, and then I'll tell about that particular thing. So the way this thing worked was, you know how they sell those barns on the side of the road and it says rent to own, yes. you know, the storage barns, same principle. I went to a guy that did those storage barns and I said, Hey, how are y'all doing this? What's the contract look like? He shared his contract with me. So I created a contract very much like their, their setup. And I went to, and Siri is trying to uh, turn on. So no, thank you, Siri. And um, so I did it basically like the barn people do it. Same, same setup. And I got people. So basically what you would do is you would pay an upfront uh, down payment, which would be a percentage of the value of the tub. And the idea was, is if you made all the payments for 36 months at the end of it, you got that deposit back. So it was a deposit against buying the tub. If you decided a, a, a month in or two months in or a year in or two years in that you no longer wanted the hot tub, that's fine. We'll gladly come and get it you lose your deposit and whatever money you paid for the hot tub. And I ended up getting tubs back three and four times because what happens, the reality of a hot tub is, is there's some people that are hot tub people and they're going to use it every single night. There's some people that are hot tub people. They use it, you know, several times a week for two or three months, they lose interest in it and they move on. Elvis was a person that would do that kind of stuff. He buy something, lose interest in it quickly and move on. But that's the, the nature of the beast of being in the hot tub business uh, some people are not hot tub people long term. Mm -hmm. So it was a way that we could buy re buy used tubs, refurb them, put them out there. People that couldn't get things financed would be able to have a hot tub. Later, hot tub uh, finance companies like Mariner would do used hot tubs. So we went from that over to Mariner. Now Mariner, if they uh, financed it and they needed somebody to go repo it, we would go pick it up for them. But when we were doing it, we'd go pick it up for us. So technically I own the hot tub until it was paid for. So in the um, contract they signed said that I could go on their property and retrieve my property without permission. So that's how we were able to do this, which is the same thing with these barns. If you didn't do that, people would just take your barns and keep them or take your hot tubs and keep them. And there was times when I lost hot tubs. So this particular case, I flew the drone over. I saw that there was nobody home and I even left the drone hovering there while I went through the gate and drove up to the house. So you could see it. Yeah. You then have. I left it. Then I turned it where it was hovering while I was loading the hot tub. So I have this pump. It's made by a company called stay right. And I put a 50 foot pool hose on it. So it's a giant blue pool hose. Y'all seen that for vacuuming pool and it'll move about 200 gallons a minute. So I can empty a 500 gallon hot tub in about three minutes. So um, I take that pump, I pull up there, I turn the tub off, I throw the pump in, and while it's emptying, I'm getting everything ready to grab this tub. This particular one was a cow spa that weighs, uh, I'm gonna say, I think that was a seven foot cow from my memory, so it weighs about 800 pounds. And I grab it by myself and I get it out of there. But you have to take the water out, you have to unwire it, you have to make it safe. I can't leave the wires just dangling. Then I have to load it. Then I have to get out of there. And when we took that particular tub, I was actually uh, delivered that particular tub. When we delivered it, um, 
I pulled around to the same side of the uh, deck that I was loading it. And it had rained a couple of days before. We like to not got out of there. Well, we took the tub off the truck. It just sat there and spun. We actually had to use the uh, the grip hoist. It's a 217. I call it the 217, but it's TU-17 grip hoist. We had to use it to to pull the truck out. We had to hook the trees and keep pulling the truck up till we got enough. That was when we delivered the tub. So I was afraid of that, too, when I was retrieving it uh, during this, this repo. Um, there was a lot of other ones that we did um, where we would show up. It's in the early ones, if you find out there, the very first one that I did, we were in and out in 29 minutes. This particular tub was a seven foot four winds tub. It weighs about 700 pounds or so. It seemed like it was a Maui. The problem with that tub was the breaker was inside the house. So I had to unwire it hot, tape it off, pull the wire through, flip the tub up, and it was on a deck pull the tub down, go through the fence and load it. And I had a guy with me. So we were able to get that one pretty quickly, but we were in and out in 29 minutes. 29 um, minutes, okay. And that's the very first one. And that's a hot tub that when we pulled up, it was 104 degrees hot, full of water. And uh, so 29 minutes is, is kind of slow. And I told the guy that was with me, his name was Tim. And I told Tim, I said, I said, 29 minutes is too long. We're going to have to make this this happen a lot faster. <laughs> yeah. From, from here on, we got to get in and out. All right. So, well, I, I know <laughs> you got any more questions. Yeah. Well, I was thinking, I was trying to think of, of at the very end, after you accomplish uh, rescuing your hot tub, you look at the camera spy guy and you say, if you don't pay, no hot tub for you. Is that right? Did I get yeah, it right? If you don't pay, you can't play. No hot tub for you or no, no hot water for you. That's no hot right. water for you. <laughs> you got to pay to play. That's it. You got to pay to play. No hot water for you is what I was doing. <laughs> <laughs> That's it right there. I was trying to figure out what, what you said exactly. Yeah. And I, I look, I feel bad about uh, taking hot tubs, but but you know, the reality is is if that's a luxury item, if you can't afford it, don't buy a hot tub. You yeah. know, it's there's some cost there, you know, to to doing it. And if you're in a position where you're struggling to pay a payment for anything, don't buy a hot tub. Yeah. So what is a payment? like a, a monthly payment for a hot tub? You know, they ranged anywhere from, I, I'm going to say, from my memory, I'm going to say 80 or $90 a month all the way up to 300 and 300 you, would be a real high-end tub. Right, but you did tell me you had a few people that stole your hot tub. Yeah, and uh, I had several stolen. And I, when I say several, I'm going to say three or four stolen. One in particular, one story was uh, I learned I learned this about that. I learned that if I if they're not making the payment and I go to the house and I see the hot tub, I take it right then. I don't have any mercy. The reason is is I went to a guy's house. This was in Hendersonville, in the town that I live in, and I went to the guy's house. This was a seven foot, I mean a, a six and a half foot, seventy eight by seventy eight Viking hot tub from my memory. And it was up a deck about 10 steps high, eight or 10 steps high. And I remember I was standing on the deck. I had my trailer there. I had someone there with me to get it. Wasn't even filming this one. This was just going and getting one. Um, and I called the guy on the phone and he was at Disney World when I called him. And he was like, oh, man. Um, and he owned a body shop, um, a local body shop. And he told me, oh, man. You know, I've sent, I made those payments. I sent my couriers, the guys that go out to pick up the parts and get paint. I sent them and gave them cash to bring payments. They're not paying you. You know, it was that kind of play on my sympathy. And yeah. I went, oh man, you know, you're really giving these people money and they're stealing your money and telling them that, you know, that you're paying me. I said, no, man, you hadn't paid me. Oh man, when I get back from Disney, I'll make that up. So when it, I felt sorry for him and, and left the tub that day. He stopped by the shop about a week later and paid me a month and never made another payment. I went back about two months later um, and the tub was gone and I never saw it again. And I tried to uh, file it as a stolen as stolen property. Police wouldn't do that. They told me it's a civil issue. It wasn't stolen. I go, no, it's my property. I, here's a rental agreement. Let me ask you this. If somebody went and rented a car from budget rent a car, and they didn't take the car and they didn't bring it back. 
and they don't know where the car is and the rental contracts run out. Is that a stolen car? He said, yeah. I said, this is the same. Oh no, we don't look at it the same. Mm. So I found out then that the law from a standpoint of, unless I was willing to go sue the person, I had no repercussions on it whatsoever. So I learned that if I got a chance to snatch a tub, you snatch it. If you see it, you take it if they're not making the payments. Yeah. yeah. And that's what you started doing. And that led yeah. to these videos that these fans will have to go check out. Yeah. Uh, because I'm telling you, it's, like I said, it's entertaining, Billy. <laughs> I mean, for real, Billy's right there and has a hot tub right on his shoulders. And I'm thinking like, this why guy, you go break your legs. I mean, you know. Was yelling at the screen, man. I did a lot of stupid stuff out there uh, with with the hot tubs. There was times when I lifted hot tubs up by hand that I shouldn't have lifted for the camera. When I had a bag there, I mentioned the the wedge. I could easily. The idea is, is you stick the bag under it flat. You get the tub up enough, you can get the bag under it. You hook a vacuum cleaner to it, and it blows up and flips the hot tub up. It's that simple. That's why it's shaped like a wedge. You put it on there on the wedge side as it blows up, it does that. So the hot tub's standing there. And but there was times when I just did stupid stuff that was injuring my body. Man, yeah. I will tell you this. Uh, I'm uh, 50, getting ready to be 58. And when I was moving hot tubs every day, I was in excellent physical shape. I I didn't get out of breath walking and all the stuff that happens to me now. That was my workout program. You know, I was constantly lifting tubs and moving tubs and pushing 800 pound tubs up hills and, and down hills. So I was in pretty good shape to be 50 years old. I think I, I did my last one at 50, I'm going to say 52 ish, 51 was when I had that back surgery, would be my guess. Um, uh, but, you know, that was 20, I think that was 2015. So it's 20. So I was 50. <laughs> Boy, time flies. Um, but some other incidents that happened, there was uh, a couple of more that stick out to me. Uh, one was a, a little corner tub. And you can see this video. This is one of the repos. And it was a little, a little triangle tub. And what happened with that one was we sold it to a lady in Lebanon, Tennessee, which is just east of Nashville, not far from my shop. It may have been 20 minutes from my shop. And at the time, the employee that worked for me that sold it to this lady lived in Lebanon. So she would drive by close to this lady's house. So I told her, I said, the next time, you know, tomorrow morning, come in later, but drive by and see if the tub is there because the girl had quit making payments. And so she came in and said, nope, I went there in the, in the apartment. I was at an apartment. The apartment's empty. Tub's gone. Tub's gone. I'm like, daggone. So the apartment's empty. And in my contract, I mentioned earlier the contract, the contract says that you cannot move that hot tub without contacting me and making me aware of, of where you're moving that hot tub. Oh, okay. so once you move it and I'm not aware of it, it's theoretically stolen at that point. Right. Okay? And so you're in default of the contract. Let's just say that. And this lady was not only in default of the contract, she was not making the payments either. So, I started trying to figure out where this lady was because, you know, it, it's people can move around, change phone numbers, cell phones. It's hard to figure out things. But something hit me about the ladies. I kept looking at her name and I went, you know what? That name, that name's familiar to me. And then it hit me. That person is a friend of mine on Facebook. <laughs> so I jumped on my Facebook and sure enough, there she is on Facebook. And I went, hmm. So I start scrolling through her Facebook feed. She's taking a picture of the front of a house that she's rented. It doesn't say where the house is at, but it's like, this is my new house that I rented. There's a picture of the front of it. So I kept on searching and I searched and searched and searched and I found where she had asked someone about cutting, the house came with a little bit of land and she had asked somebody about cutting the grass at the house and to cut this land, to trim the grass on this land and put the address in there where she wanted them to do that at. And uh, so I took that address, jumped on Google Earth and sure enough, there's the front of that house. The problem was, is it was two hours away. She had moved between Nashville and Memphis. Um, so from Lebanon, she had moved like two and a half, well, two hours and 20 minutes away thinking that I would never find her. So what I did, 
um, was when I figured out the address, I loaded the trailer, I was by myself, and I went to, um, somebody is, is emailing me, I'm sorry. I can't wait yeah. till you find this. I can't wait till you find this hot tub. Okay, so what <laughs> happened is um, I find that where she, um, where she moved to, I loaded my trailer, took the truck, got my camera, of course, and I went straight to that house. Oh. And uh, when I pull up, I knock on the door. There's nobody there. And I, um, or I think there's nobody there. After it's all said and done, I think the lady was really there. But what it was, was the same thing as the first tub that I talked about. The breaker for this was inside the garage. I couldn't get in there to turn the breaker off. So I had to unwire it hot. So what I do is take one lead off at the time and tape it up and all that. And then I get the tub loaded and all that. And I go back to knock on the door to try to talk to her again. And I remember at the foot of the hot tub, there was a, uh, a like a welcome mat. And it was from Duck Dynasty. It was Phil Robinson. And it said, happy, happy, happy on it. <laughs> what did so you do? in the video, I take the camera and I point at it. And I said, when she gets home, she's not going to be happy, happy, happy. <laughs> and she called me and cussed me saying that she had a son that was sick. And how dare I take her hot tub, even though she couldn't make the payments that I should have felt sorry for her and all these kind of things, but you remember the rule. The rule is if you see it, you take it. And that's what I did. Yeah, so she wanted to personally take advantage of you, spa guy. And and then when you came and got your rightful property, you're the bad guy, I guess, right? <laughs> yeah, that seems to be the uh, the theme nowadays uh, for stuff like that, where um, uh, somehow I become the bad guy. <laughs> And these things, when I'm doing the right thing, I'm the bad guy. And yeah. in this particular hey. case, it was my property. How do you do it? You're not, I can't point there. You're not Superman. Yeah. You're the villain. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm the Joker. That's exactly right. You're the Joker of the story, right? Yeah. So, so, okay, so one, really, I wish that you somehow we could have, you know, you could have figured out a way to, to set up a camera to record these people coming back to their homes and then seeing there's no hot tub. Where'd the hot tub go? I wish yeah. they would have captured these people's initial uh, uh, reactions and seeing their hot tub missing. Well, you would be surprised at how many of them called me and cussed me out because I took the hot tub and they weren't making the payments. But, you know, I don't just, I don't just, you don't, you miss one payment and I show up and take the tub. These people were months behind. Yeah. And we called them and they wouldn't return our call. You know, it's that kind of stuff. We did our part. You know, it's not in my spirit to just go take somebody's hot tub. We're doing things to try to, uh, to go, uh, you know, to be fair to the people. I want to do that, but it's a business too, you know, and we got up to where we were doing, uh, I was, I was bringing in $15,000 a month on rental hot tubs at one point, which is a lot of money. And, um, and you know, that's perpetual income, but it was a lot of work to keep up with it because a lot of people would fall out and you get it and they would mess the tub up and I'd have to refurb it again to re. So it was a, there was a, a lot of downside to it too. Um, but it was, uh, it was a fun business. I, to my knowledge, I'm the only person in the United States to rent hot tubs, you know, to own in the beginning. Now I had a couple of people copy me. Um, the, there's one guy in particular that copied me that went out of business doing it. He was, he was trying to rent to own brand new hot tubs, which was not very smart, but anyway, we won't talk about him. So let me tell you about one more that, um, uh, how we figured this one out. This guy, was about two hours away. And uh, where he was, was on the other side of Clarksville, Tennessee. I just did a video about uh, Sergeant Carter, uh, mm -hmm. uh, Frank Sutton uh, on Gomer Pyle. Sergeant Carter was born and raised in Clarksville, lived in Nashville for a period of time. This was on the other side of Clarksville, Tennessee. And you remember the monkey song, last train to Clarksville, that's the Clarksville. So this was on the other side of Clarksville. And this was a really heavy tub. It weighed about a thousand pounds. And I got it from a Nashville Predators hockey player, professional hockey player. It was at a really nice home and he wasn't using it. And I bought it from him, but it was a really, really extraordinarily heavy tub because the sides on it were made out of Trex decking. 
So it had that really thick decking on it like that. And you can imagine how much that would weigh. The stuff is heavy anyway. And it was one of those tubs that was short in one direction. It was 70, um, it was 80 inches tall one way. It was only 30 or 80 inches wide the short way. And it was like 90 inches long. And then it was 32 inches tall. So you could stand it up and take it through a door. So it was designed to go inside or outside. So I sold it to this guy and it was on a deck that was on the right side of the house. Most decks are behind the house. This particular house, the deck was on the right side. And the guy called me a couple of months before that. And it, I knew something was up with this guy because it's not normal for somebody to call you and go, uh, you know, I'm having a problem with the hot tub. It's got a leak. You know, no, the, the normal conversation would be this. Hey, I'm having a problem with the hot tub. It's got a leak. Would you come solve it for me? It should be under warranty. Gladly. This guy's conversation was, hey, man. You know, what kind of piece of junk hot tub did you sell me? It's got, you know, and he'd had it for a period of time. He'd had it for over a year. You know, it was that kind of conversation. So it was a negative conversation from the beginning. So I had been there a couple of months before this and repaired a pump. It had a waterway pump in it. I can remember sitting there on the deck working on the pump and uh, repairing it. It was just a bad seal on the pump. So it wasn't a big deal to fix. Very simple repair. And I fixed it. And then a couple of months later, we realized that he was not making the payments on this thing. So I think it was one of those situations where he was trying to come up with a reason why he was not making the payments. You know, it was that, that kind of thing. Oh, this thing's a piece of junk. That's why I'm not making the payments. So I finally got him on the phone and, uh, and he told me that he had moved to St. Louis, Missouri, which from where he's at is probably only another two hours. He was on the other side of Clarksville. It may be two and a half hours, but it's not. Uh, St. Louis, Missouri is not a long ways from Nashville, you know, from where I'm at. But where he was at was closer. So he had told me that, you know, I've moved and it's in St. Louis, Missouri, and you're never going to get it back. And there ain't nothing you can do about it. You know, it was that kind of yeah. that kind of conversation. So I thought and I had been there recently. So I thought we'll I remember there was a house. There was a house across the street. And so I got on Google Earth and I figured out what that there was a house directly across the street and I searched out the name and I called the number and it was an elderly lady. And uh, and I said, ma'am, do you live across the street from such and such? And she said, yes, I do. I said, uh, are you where you could see out your front window? Could you see across the street? She said, yes, sir. I said, do you see there's a deck on the right side of the house and there's a gray box on that deck? Can you see it? She said, yeah, there's a gray box on the deck, I, it, it, you know, beside the swimming pool. And I said, thank you so much for that information. That's great information. I really appreciate you um, uh, giving me that. And, uh, and so I loaded the trailer and went right then. And when I got there, he had a, I don't know what you call this thing. I think it's called an avalanche. It's a Chevrolet avalanche, like a pickup truck. It looks kind of like an Escalade, but it's cut out. You know out. what I'm talking about? I think and I, it was I parked it. at an angle in front of the, there was two or three steps up to the deck where this hot tub was. And it was parked where if I brought the hot tub off the deck, I wouldn't hit the truck, but it would be close. So mm -hmm. I knew this guy's going to try to say that I damaged his truck. So I took the camera, I took my steel camera and went all the way around. Back then I, I carried a little Canon camera in my pocket, you know, but it would only shoot 720 uh, film. And I kept it in my pocket. So I walked all the way around the truck and took pictures of that. Then, and I may have taken them on my cell phone too by that time, but I usually kept a Canon camera in my pocket. Um, and I, I went all the way around it with my video camera as well. So when he said that, I would have proof. So I got the tub and I'd already had conversations with him about, you know, he told me I could, I would never get the tub back. It was in a different state. So I got the tub, got it loaded. And when I start leaving, he starts texting me, accusing me of doing what? Accusing you of damaging his truck. That's exactly right. He sure was. And I said, sorry, buddy. I've already taken pictures before and after I took the, I have a video of before and after the hot tubs on the trailer. I walk back around it and show you the hot tubs on the trailer now. Yeah, I was so wondering this is after. That I, I was wondering if that's how you did it. You showed it before and then you said, all right, so guys, I have loaded my hot tub in the back of my trailer, did something this guy said that I was never going to do. And I want to just show y'all that his truck was never touched. That's, that's exactly did. right. 
And that's exactly how I did it. But as I'm leaving that town, he claims he's following me and that he's going to harm me. And I had to remind him that I carry a weapon, you know, and in that particular video, I even show you the texts where he is threatening me and all that kind of stuff and claiming he's following me. I think he was home the whole time. I think that truck is his truck and he yeah. watched me do it and then yeah. thought that he would at least threaten me about it. But I got that tub back. Um, but there was some people that just felt, um, uh, for the lack of a better word, they almost felt entitled to keep other people's property. And I think that's where we're at now. We're almost in a uh, society where people feel entitled to things like somehow I owe them a hot tub or I owe them something mm -hmm. uh, like that lady being mad at me and saying, well, you know, I'm a single mother and I've got a child that's sick. And yeah, but you moved and rented a house and took my hot tub. <laughs> it took some effort to take my hot tub two hours away. But do you see a, a thing? You, do you see a trend here where it's all the people that were two hours away that wanted to do this stuff? But the you know, one, three see, of what, those were a good ways away from me. Yeah, but what these people didn't understand and didn't realize was you're an investigator. So the spa guy is going to investigate this story and he is going to find your house two and a half hours away and he's going to show up and get his hot tub back. Or I'm going to search it whatever out. Whatever it is, you're not going to do you wrong, Billy. That's that's the that what the story means is just don't treat me wrong. That's all you ask. Yeah, yeah. I don't put up with that, you know. And there's a lot of people that think, and the same thing with you. They think that we should be doormats. They think that they ha are entitled. You know, let's talk about this for just a minute. Entitlement. They feel entitled to get on our videos and say anything they they want to us without fear of repercussion. Like we shouldn't say anything to them, but they can say anything they want to to us. Yeah. I'm glad you brought that up. Cause last night I had someone write me something that made me laugh. Um, let me see if I could find it right quick. Well, it was the extent he told me that, um, one of my I episodes, I get, I get three minutes. Okay, so one of my episodes, spy guy, uh, with a uh, run Strauss, Elvis's pilot, uh, yeah. people have been viewing it the last week. And this guy wrote me three paragraphs. And he told me that there were all these ads playing every few minutes and it pisses. He used that word everyone off because they can't watch the story and they're scam artist ads and that he was going to unfollow my channel and stop watching the video because of these ads. And I said, well, first of all, buddy, I have nothing to do with the ads. Second off, I make a video every week for Elvis Presley. And I spent a lot of time doing that. And if you can't, you know, watch an ad, skip it after three or four seconds for me to make gas money so I can continue making these videos for you. I don't care. Don't watch. Go to another right. Elvis channel. Just move on. But he wrote me three paragraphs, Billy, just dogging me because of ads running on my channel. Do you not watch YouTube? There's ads on every channel, but YouTube puts those ads there. Well, oh, does he not watch TV? There's ads <laughs> yeah. on TV. You know, yeah. these people think for some reason they're entitled to our work, Trey. Yeah. Well, I don't I know what hard. makes people think that. I do too. I work hard. And like when these ads pop up, guys, if you don't understand what the ads do, I get probably about three cents an ad. Maybe. If maybe, even that. If even that. Really, I've looked at it. And I don't, you make like little pennies. On the ad, so it, it will take a lot of you guys watching our videos for us to even make 25 bucks on the video or $20. Mm -hmm. I mean, and you know what $25 gets you today? I can't even get a tank of gas. And when <laughs> we're know? going to film, we have to have gas. We have to have rooms. Yeah. We have to eat. Yeah. Uh, you know, we tabulated it the other day. I've spent, to make Elvis videos for the last seven years, I've spent about $100,000. I haven't made a hundred thousand. So I've spent more than I made making these videos. And then you get people that complain that uh, they don't like the way the audio sounds or there's a pop-up commercial or I talk too much. And you know, that, yeah. <laughs> you know, I was just thinking about was, watching or listen, listening. I was thinking like, man, that's such an incredible video that I give you. I gave you guys with the run Strauss. And you're mad at me because of the ads playing. I mean, come on, man. Unbelievable. <laughs> well, we're yeah. at the end of this episode, friends, and I'm sorry we're complaining a little bit. If you want to see the hot tub repos, 
put in Spa Guy Hot Tub Repo on YouTube, and there's only six, so it'd be easy to watch. Make sure you check them out, and thank y'all so much for listening to Wishing Cotton Was a Monkey Witwam. Thank you so much, Trey. I'll see you on the next one. Hey, Spa Guy, before you cut yeah. it, hey, remember, guys, if you ever repo or uh, rent a, a, a hot tub from the Spa Guy, if you don't pay, no hot water for you. <laughs> That's a fact. That was a good one. <laughs>